Hello, in this session we will look at an introduction to the storage options that are available to the EC2 instance and we will also look at an introduction about one of the storage options that we have which is your EBS. Right now, in the last session, we looked at an introduction to your AMI. So, once again, AMI it stands for Amazon Machine Image, and this is simply your operating system. So, at any point, if you want to specify what operating system you want to use for the virtual machine, or like let's say you want to use a Mac OS or a Windows or a Linux Red Hat Ubuntu, any operating system basically you want to use, you can specify that by making use of your AMI. All right, so it's, it's simply your Amazon machine image. Now, in this particular session, we will talk about the storage options that are available for your EC2 instances. Once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So, your Amazon EC2 service it provides us with a flexible, cost effective, and easy to use uh, data storage options for the EC2 instance. So, your EC2 it has uh, different different options. Uh, that we can use as part of storing our uh, data which is both flexible as well as cost effective and depending on your use case you can choose one of these options so each option has a unique combination of performance and durability so each of these storage options has a different performance and different durability combination and these storage options can be used independently or in combination to suit your requirements so either you can go with only one option to store your data or you can go with multiple options in combination to uh, store the data based on your requirement. So these storage options include, so we have your EBS storage which stands for Elastic Block Store. So by default, whenever we launch our EC2 instances, based on the AMI that you select, the AMI decides whether you are going with the block storage or not. So by default, most of the AMI supports your Elastic Block Store. Then we have the instance store volumes. Then we have your Amazon S3 buckets and then we also have your Amazon EFS. So these are the four storage options that are available that we can use to store our data. Now we can either make use of one of these options to store the data or also we can make use of this in a combination to store the data based on the requirement. Now in this particular session we will be talking uh, specifically about your uh, EBS uh, storage. In the upcoming sessions, we will be talking about your other storage options that we have. So let's talk a bit more about your Elastic Block Store. Now, uh, EBS, it stands for Elastic Block Store. And this provides you with a block level storage that we can use with your EC2 instances. All right. So your EBS volume, as the name suggests, Elastic Block Store, it's your block level storage. So generally, when we talk about your storage, we have your uh, object level storage, we have uh, block level storage, uh, we have tape drive. So we have different different types of storage. Now EBS it supports your block level storage and we can attach this to your EC2 instances. So these EBS volumes that you attach your EC2 instances, they behave like raw unformatted block devices and we can start storing your raw data on top of this. And once you're done creating these volumes, you can attach them to your EC2 instances. Now during the time of launching your EC2 instance, uh, we will need to specify your EBS volumes. In addition to that, you can attach or you can mount additional uh, volumes if you want. So these EBS volumes that are attached to your EC2 instances, these are exposed as storage volumes that persist and independently from the life of the instance. So these volumes, they're not dependent on the life cycle of your EC2 instance. If you want the data to be persistent, then you can go with your EBS volume. So even if you destroy the EC2 instance, the data would still be available for us. So we'll talk more on this uh, later on. Now, Amazon recommends um, using Amazon EBS for the data that must be quickly accessible and long-term persistent. So if you want to make your data quickly accessible and if you want to make your data uh, persistent for a longer duration, it is recommended that you go with your EBS storage. And EBS volumes are particularly well suited for uh, use as your primary storage for your file systems like storing the data on your servers we can use it for your uh, databases or any applications that require fine regular uh, sorry granular updates and access to raw unformatted block level storage so this is basically your block level storage and uh, it is recommended that we use this if you want to have a persistent storage and we can use this as a file system or a databases or any application which requires your block 
level storing. And with this uh, Amazon EBS, we are only going to pay for what we use. So we are only going to pay for the storage that we are going to utilize. So by default, whenever we are launching our EC2 instances, we get to select this. So this is basically your hard disk, the storage capacity that you want for the virtual machine. So whenever we are launching our uh, EC2 instances, you should be able to see the storage options. So here you can see configure uh, storage. So depending upon the AMI that you have selected, so in my case, I've selected this Amazon Linux AMI. So this one by default gives me 8 GB of storage capacity. And we have different different types uh, under this. I will be talking about this in the next session. But here, this specifies your storage capacity. Now, important point to remember is under your free tire, we can go up to 30 GB of uh, storage capacity and we can go with your general purpose SSD storage or magnetic. So if you go with any other option, you'll have to pay money and also maximum we can have is 30 GB of storage capacity. Now this will be your root volume. So if you're comfortable with the Windows machine, you can think of it as your C drive where all of your OS related information will be stored. All right. Now, if you want to have additional volume, you can attach it over here. So you can see add volume, add volume. So this like you can think of it as your C drive, D drive, E drive, and then so on. Now you can either attach it during the launch of your EC2 instance, or you can also uh, do it after your launch of EC2 instance. So in the upcoming session, I will show that as well, how you can create new volume and you can mount it to the EC2 instance. But this is basically uh, where we select your storage. Now this is by default your EBS volume. So depending on the uh, AMI that you have selected, the um, volume type will also be decided. So in this case, it is using your EBS storage, all right? Now let's talk about some of the features that are available as part of your EBS. So we can create an EBS volume in specific availability zone and then attach it to an instance in that same availability zone. Now, one of the very important points to remember with your EBS volume is, so now let's say we have two different availability zones. So let's say we have US East 1A and then we have US East 1B. And then we have a, a, a volume, an EBS volume in one of these availability zones. Now, the uh, EBS volume and the instance should be within the same availability zone. For us to attach this EBS volume to the EC2 instance, they should be in the same availability zone. We cannot have a cross availability zone uh, connection. So, uh, now let's say if you want to mount this to the uh, other EC2 instance, which is, in a, which is in a different availability zone, by default, it is not possible. But there are a few steps that we can do to make this data available in a different availability zone. But by default, your uh, EBS volume and the EC2 instance should be in the same availability zone uh, for us to mount this to the EC2 instance. Now to make a volume available outside of this availability zone, what, what we can do is we can create a snapshot of it. Now snapshot is nothing but it's a backup. So again, we'll talk about this more later on. And using that snapshot, we can create your EBS volume in a different availability zone. And then we can attach that, we can mount that to your EC2 instance which is running in a different availability zone. This can be done. But the important point to remember here is your EBS volume and the EC2 instance should be in the same availability zone for us to attach that volume to that EC2 instance. The next feature we have is it provides us with different, different uh, volume types. So we have uh, general purpose SSD storage, we have provisioned IOPS, we have throughput optimized, we have cold HDD. So these are some of the options that are available so for us. So here if you see, um, you should be able to see the options over here. So we'll talk about this in detail in the next session. But these are the different different options that we get under your EBS volumes. Then uh, we can create EBS volumes as encrypted volume so we have the option of encrypting the data as well by default the data is not encrypted but if you want to encrypt the data we can do that um, for this we have a service called tms key management service which can be used to generate the encryption keys and then encrypt the data so this can be used for a wide variety of use cases like uh, for encryption of your data at rest or any regulated or audited data um, and application so for regulatory requirement or auditing requirement, um, you know it requires that you want to you should encrypt your data. Then 
uh, your EBS volume supports that as well. So here uh, under advanced file systems, we should be able to see that. So if I click on advanced over here, this is the uh, details about the uh, volume. And here you can see this encrypted option. By default, it is not encrypted, but if you want to encrypt it, you can go ahead and encrypt it. And this makes use of your KMS service, the key management service, right? Um, the next feature we have is it also supports uh, backups of your data. So we can create a point in time snapshots of your EBS volume. So snapshots are nothing but your uh, backups. So at any point, if you want to take a backup of your EBS volumes, we can make use of your snapshots. And these snapshots are persistent in Amazon S3. So uh, Amazon S3 is another service that we will be talking about uh, in the upcoming sessions. So simply uh, at any point, if you want to take a backup of your uh, data, we can make use of your snapshots. And using these snapshots, we can restore the data. So we can create new volumes. Um, we can restore the data in a different availability zone or in a different region, any way you want, you can do it. So snapshots, they mainly help you know, protect your data for long-term durability. And uh, we can um, we can use this as a starting point for new EBS volume. So at any point, you want to uh, make sure your data is highly available and it is uh, durable. We can make use of snapshots to take a backup of that data. And then whenever we need that data, we can go ahead and use that to create your new volumes. So in the upcoming sessions, I will be showing you how you can create your uh, snapshots as well. Then it also provides us with performance metrics such as your bandwidth metrics or throughput metrics, your uh, latency, um, average, uh, length. All of these metrics are available in the AWS Management Console with respect to your EBS volumes. Now, all of these metrics are uh, provided by another service that we have in AWS called CloudWatch. Now, CloudWatch is your monitoring service in AWS. And this allows us to monitor the performance of your EBS volumes, the overall performance of your EBS volumes can be monitored by uh, using these metrics. So these are some of the default metrics that are available for us. And we can start monitoring how our EBS uh, volumes are performing uh, by, by monitoring these particular metrics. So these are some of the features that your EBS volume uh, provides. So that's basically an introduction to the uh, Elastic Block Store. So this is uh, the storage option that you can think of is, uh, as your hard disk for your EC2 instances and this is one of the storage option that we have in your uh, um, EC2 service. Uh, in the next session, uh, we will talk about uh, some of the different types that we have under your uh, EBS and we'll also be talking about your different storage options in the um, uh, upcoming sessions. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.